Hey kids, it's time for another episode of Kitty Cat Gaming with your host, Mortimer! KKG! KKG! Yay! Hey everybody and welcome back to another exciting episode of Kitty Cat Gaming. Today we are playing more Katawa Shoujo and we have uh, just finished another school day and we are going to go play Risk with the student council girls. Again, no one seems to notice, or if they do, no one says anything. I want to ask Misha about it, but I don't want to be nosy. Oh, okay. After school, Shizune and Misha quickly find me by the first floor lobby and latch onto me, covering each flank in case I might try to escape. I feel a little offended, but I've been considering it. Nevertheless, I've been a bit, I'm a bit disturbed that enough people have made a break for it in the past that they're on their guard. What's with the escort? It doesn't make me feel very comfortable. In fact, it makes me feel like a dangerous prisoner being transported to his cell. Haha, <laughs> what's wrong, he chan That's right, we're just gonna go play a game of Risk, remember? I don't know, Misha. This all seemed a little sinister to me. I start thinking that when we sit down to play the game, they'll tie me down and torture me until I agree to join the student council. Well, that's highly unlikely, but still, for some reason, it just seems like it would be so plausible. Getting to the student council room is simple as turning two corners from where we started. What? That's it? This makes... Uh, this makes you guys being so on top of me seem a little silly. That's not true, He-Chan. Chi-Chan says that when their life is threatened, people have shown the capability to pull off superhuman bursts of speed. Life is threatened. Her expression unchanging, Misha signs something amusedly to Shizune, who makes a baffling face and puts her hands behind her back, looking pleased with herself. <laughs> Misha feigns deafness and hums cheerily. Stop that, I know you heard me. You have no excuse, unlike Shizune. Shizune opens the door to the student council room. It's a very plain, sparsely decorated room. Although it's quite large, maybe even a little large for a classroom. There's a big table in the center surrounded by chairs and a smaller desk prominently placed in the back that I assume is Shizume's. There's a few regular desks and chairs stacked to one side as well. Extras, perhaps? Aside from the tables and chairs, the room doesn't have much to else to offer. Just a couple of filing cabinets and bookshelves stacked with old school reports and documents. Not much else. In fact, nothing else. This is a pretty bleak room. They could at least put a potted plant in here or something. But the most notable thing in this room doesn't have uh, this room doesn't have is other people. Are we early? No. Oh, what do you mean no? Does it does it mean nobody else is coming today? Yeah, that's right. Before I manage to ask why that's the case, Shizune claps her hands together very energetically. Hee-chan, let's play Risk. Come on, you promised, didn't you? You have to. <coughs> ha ha ha. Okay, okay, okay. Do you want to know the rules? We can explain to you while we have everything set up. While Misha is talking, Shizune takes out what looks like a board game from behind one of the filing cabinets and throws it on the table. Actually, this looks kind of interesting. After Misha spends a little too long for her liking running through the basics with a somewhat vague and confusing tutorial, Shizune cuts in and declares the game has started with a decisive motion slicing her arm through the air. Shizune's aggressiveness is rubbing off onto me. I start feeling more competitive than I intended to be when we agreed to this. Halfway to the game, while I try to ponder how to defend against Shizune's assault from two fronts, she breaks my concentration by drumming her fingers on the table to get my attention. Hee-chan, Shi-chan wants you to know that you are taking too long to make a move. Shi-chan also says that she will let you keep Australia if you agree to join the student council. I thought this was a game with no strings attached. Just the fact that she would dangle that over my head as an offer uh, means that she knows I care about the outcome of this game. And anyway, no. Shi-chan admires your fighting spirit. It would be a benevolent dictator who will spare your people if you agree to join the student council. Oh my god. You're so competitive, Shizune. She seems to take this as a compliment. I would expect the student council president to be a little more magnanimous. Magnanimous? She doesn't seem to know what that word means or how it's signed, so she pulls out a piece of paper and writes it for Shizune, who in return signs it back to Misha. Misha presses her index fingers against her temples as if trying to physically imprint the word into her memory. Suddenly, Shizune bursts into a flurry of gestures. Misha looks daunted by the pace of her heated signing. Ah, oh, wait, please slow down, Chi-chan. Um, He-chan. Chi-chan says that you're going to lose. Tell her I will crush her world empire with my rebellion. Ah, okay. Those eyes of hers shine with childlike mischief. She says you have no chance if you keep playing like this. No, you won't. Should we say she has a clear a point, attack aggressively, or it's a trap? It's smarter to play defensive here. Uh, uh, let's attack aggressively. She's either really mocking me or trying to trick me. I have nothing else to lose, though, so I might as well try something different. 
Maybe if I spread out my forces and try to control more territories, I can recoup the advantage. Suzune seems to focus on conquering whole nations, so maybe I can sacrifice my whole on, con on continents to gain more small countries. No, that's terrible. It's worth a shot. A few turns later, I end up losing the game anyways. Suzune adjusts her glasses victoriously and allows herself to tentatively pump a fist in the air in celebration. I win! I win! Yay! There's no need to translate that. It was pretty clear. Aha! Don't look so sad, Hee-chan. You were really giving it your best. That's what I thought. Sometimes your best just isn't good enough, though, and if anyone knows that, it's me. You did very well for someone who just learned how to play today. Hee chan you attacked Iceland and North America at the same time. That's a very daring move. Shi chan is impressed. The mark of great people is that they are daring, and they can follow through. You're already halfway there. Isn't that great, Hee chan That isn't enough, though. Just potential isn't enough. There is no point to potential if you don't take the first step, and there's no point to that if you don't keep going. I want to see more. You're right, Chi-chan, but that's so demanding. Shizune leans forward, suddenly looking a lot less playful and a lot more serious person than I expected to, her to be from the start. Chi-chan, would you like to join the student council? She really doesn't waste any time, does she? But it's only my second day of school, so I'm hesitant about committing to something so early. I haven't even taken a look at the other clubs yet. But spending time with Shizune and Misha doesn't seem like something I would hate. I still need more time to think about it before I decide for sure. Maybe I'll get back to you on it. Okay, Hee-chan, I hope you're not just saying that so we don't feel bad. No, really. Really? Hee-chan, if you're going to say that, you're saying that is definitely the truth and there can't be any mistaking it. I know, I know, I guess I should have my revenge for losing at the very least. Shizune smiles at me in the mischievous way that feels like twisting the knife in the wound of my loss. I take a glance at the clock on the wall and realize I spent uh, far longer playing Risk than I expected. Sorry, I think I have to go. I wanted to go to the library. It's not closed yet, is it? Shizune scratches her head and gestures at Misha. How hard can it be to determine whether the library is open? There's a clock right there on the wall. It should be, unless the librarian is absent. I think you're right, Chi-chan. We think the library is open. It's on the second floor. I can't miss it. Do you want us to show you where it is? No thanks. It's okay. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Huh. One flight of stairs up and I run into problems. The second floor hallway is a carbon copy of the third floor one. Wide, of course, and plain like the hallways can be. The problem is that the library's whereabouts are not as easily determined as one would think. The classrooms are marked with signs stating which class they belong to, but then there is a plethora of other ones, unmarked rooms. Is the library one of them, or is it somewhere down the hall? I bet on the ladder and choose my direction at random. After I turn around the corner, an unmarked door draws my attention because it's not closed. It's not open either, though, just barely ajar so that I can see it's open and nothing else. It would make sense for the library door to be invitingly open, and while this one is not quite that, it's good enough. At the very least, it means that someone is inside and I can ask for directions no matter how embarrassing that is. I gingerly push on the center of the door with my fingertips, every muscle in my arm ready to pull back at a moment's notice. The feeling of being an outsider to the school can't be shaken from my mind, so much as uh, so that I instinctively fear that some that doing fear doing something wrong by entering. The door slowly creaks as if it groans from a deep sleep, though uh, though it's much easier to open than I anticipated. Leaning over and poking my head even further inside to gain sight of the room as fast as possible, the meek hello on my lips is quickly snatched away. Uh oh, oh, she cute. This is not as I was expecting. I mindlessly let the door open to its full extent, taking the side of the solitary figure taking center stage in the otherwise abandoned room. The situation steals my voice, leaving me sitting at the doorway staring at a beautiful girl. Evidently, having taken her time to assess the situation, the girl gently puts down her teacup and opens her eyes but doesn't look at me. Hello there, may I help you? Staring directly in front of her, the movements of her lips seem to break the silence rather than the words. However, it's soft, measured voice that reminds me she's being separated from the room itself. Not only is she likely the tallest girl I've ever laid eyes on, but amongst the foreigners I've met, she's strikingly distinct. Uh, hi, sorry for intruding. I was just kind of lost. She takes a moment to formulate a response before speaking. Every action she takes feels as if it's carefully choreographed beforehand. Care to take a seat? Unexpectedly, considering that I am intruding upon her. Um, thanks. I slowly step towards an another seat opposite her, the girl resting the teacup and saucer on the wind table in between. The way she doesn't track my movements with her head is telling. That and the slight cloudiness to her eyes means she must be at least partially blind like Kenji. Come to think of it, her voice doesn't have any detectable accent either. I guess she must be half Japanese. As I take my seat, her composure takes me slightly off guard. Her airs of relaxed confidence makes the slight, uh, silence un entirely comfortable. The calming atmosphere is so different from that of the student council office. I take it you're a new student to Yamuka? Yakumuka? Ah yes, I transferred in yesterday. 
I get the distinct feeling my speech patterns don't match the formality of hers, accentuated by her restrained bow of greeting. One which I hasten to match before realizing the futility of the action. I'm Lily Satao. Nice to meet you. Hisao. Hisao Nakai. She, nod, uh, she gives a nod before gesturing roughly in the direction of her teacup. Would you care for a drink? Sure. As much as it pains me, I can't keep in step with her formality in the proceedings. She gives a kind nod, taking the request in stride. Oh, wow. Without another word, she steps off in the chair, prepares a second cup of tea from a collection of supplies laid out along the shelf. A brush here, a brush there. Her left hand often lightly touching the side of whatever container she's been pouring it into. It seems to be a process she's followed a dozen of times before. As I lean sideways to see around her back, she seems to use her long, dainty fingers to measure the right amount of water in the cup. It's one thing to see the different disabilities the students have in class have, in class have but it's quite another to see how everyone seems to adapt. Shizune and Misha have no problem working together to communicate to me, and Lily herself seems to have, been, have workarounds for problems I've never even thought of. While I feel slightly guilty about her doing the work, she seems pleased to be following the correct process of the, off, of the offering preparing the drink. So, her soft voice brings me out of my silent observance. Which room were you looking for? It's not often the classroom is visited after school. The school library, Shizune and, I mean, some classmates told me it was on this floor. She finishes pouring water into the teacup as she nods. A small metallic tapping comes from the teacup indicating it's being stirred. I'm aware of Miss Hakamichi, as are most students. To be with them means you're in class 3-3, no? That's right, in the science room with Muto. She gives a small giggle before sitting down the teaspoon and slowly walking towards the table, teacup and saucer in hand. He's quite a character. I'll Im I imagine you'll come to like him. Most do. As she sets down the tea, I gently take it and have a sip. I'm really more of a coffee person, but this seems ra uh, like a rather bad moment to bring it up. Nonetheless, this smells quite nice. I hardly think it'd be hard to choke down. Thanks, Sato. It tastes really nice. She smiles and quickly waves her hand in front of her face. Lily, please. There's no need to be too formal. She says this in spite of her exceedingly well-bred speech. Oh well. I guess I should try and ask her about herself as it really does seem as if she's catering to me. So which class are you from? I imagine it's not... It's one of the third year classes. Correct. In, I'm in class 3-2, which is on the third floor, same as yours. It's taught by Miyagi and is specifically for both blind and partially blind students. I see. Ah, uh, I mean, uh, sorry? I feel like slapping myself for the faux pas. Looking at her face, though, she doesn't seem in the least to be put off by it. My, my, there's no need to change your speech on my account. Ah, uh, sure, sorry, I guess I really showed my newness here. An environment like this would be a big change, so I can't fault you for it. While the same can't be said for everyone, many have come to terms with their conditions. A category which would include her, it seems. All too ready to jump ship from this particular topic, I seek into another one. Do you come here to drink tea often? It's a really nice place. Thinking on it, this might be her version of the place behind my school that I like to have lunch at. I come here fairly often during lunch times. My duties as class representative don't leave enough time for an official club. So, a friend and I use this room to have tea. Class representative, huh? Compared to Shizune, her mannerisms seem to be almost completely opposite. While Shizune is blunt and fear, uh, fiercely driven, Lily seems relaxed and calmed, almost aloof. Come to think of it, she might be useful for a less biased view of the school clubs. What kind of clubs are there to join? Mm, the more popular ones are the track and field club, which uses the field near the school during lunch times, the baseball club and the book clubs in, the room, in a room near the library. There's also numerous small ones too though, such as the art and music clubs. At a time when I'm just wanting to get on my feet, rushing into club right away seems like slightly unappealing. I wonder if the school shares the same rules as my old one. Is it compulsory to join a club? It isn't, uh, though it is encouraged. Ah, good, that's a relief. So you don't have to join a club right away. I really let down my guard around this girl to let such a thing slip out. The fact seems to slightly amuse her. Not wanting my tea to get cold, I finally start drinking it as Lily does the same. Oh wow, we've been here for a while. Uh, well, next time on the next episode of Kitty Cat Gaming, we're gonna finish talking to Lily and hopefully get to that library. Uh, be sure to hit that subscribe button so you guys don't miss the next episode, and let me know what you guys think about this game down below, and I'll see you guys all then. Bye, everybody! <laughs>